please welcome the head of the coalition, Rod Ferguson, and WWE superstar, Austin Creed. Red and black. How are you? Good to see you. How's everything? Good to see you. Good to see you guys again. All right, enjoy the panel. Thank you very much. What's going on, everybody? Good. So, uh, Gears of War 5, you guys kind of excited about it? Just a little bit. Are you kind of excited about it? There we go. Weirdly, you know how to work a crowd. That's strange. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> Once or so twice. weird. I know, strange. This is, this is a nice setup. First it is. Of all. Wow. This is comfy. Uh, thank you guys for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, Gears of War 5, obviously, uh, had some big news that dropped. And uh, Rod. Yeah, it's a, our, our we ship date. So we're coming out uh, September 10th, September 6th with early access. So hopefully you're all going to be online September 10th. Uh, and uh, we announced our new mode, debuted our new, new mode, uh, Escape, yes. which is our three-player co-op aggressive multiplayer mode, uh, trying to, you plant the bomb, uh, and you get inside the hive, you plant the bomb, and you, you fight your way out. And so much fun. So uh, <laughs> essentially when we got to pick the game up and play it, it's one of those games where you're sitting locally, local co-ops, so you're sitting with your friends in chairs on the couch, whatever, and you find out in the next 10 minutes, we're just gonna be screaming at each other <laughs> while we're staring at the screen. I feel like that's something that uh, not so many games have nowadays, so to be able to have that awesome local co-op experience, just it feels good. Yeah, I mean, co-op, we'd like to say co-op is cake, not icing to Gears of War. Right? Like we, when, every time we come to the game, it's always about the co-op. And because co-op is just a short form for shared experience. And you know, every time we meet fans, we did a poster signing last night, it's all about the stories of a shared experience. Like this is how me and my brother stay together. This, oh, I met my girlfriend and now we're married and we had cut the cake with the Lancer. And you know, like it's all these stories about how it, the game has brought people together and it's really meaningful to us and the team. So it's super exciting. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, it's been amazing to see the franchise grow in the ways that it has. And the fact that we've got this escape mode and it's so much fun uh, and it's so intricate and so detailed and just such a good time, um, we appreciate it. <laughs> Me, me, me sitting on the but side, it, I appreciate you doing this. Well, and it's, and it's one, one thing of a bunch of different beats. You know, that's one of the things we, people, people are like, hey, how come you haven't shown campaign gameplay? You know, that's, and part of it is like, Gears 5, we want to challenge expectations. Mm -hmm. And we look like, oh, six minutes of campaign gameplay with Rod playing it on stage is kind of like, almost like every Gears at E3. And so we wanted to, hey, we said last year we had our campaign moment. We've got so much in the box, you know? And so it was like, okay, this time we're going to talk about Escape. We knew Escape was going to be on the floor. Yeah. So let's put Escape on the stage. Uh, and then, like, July, we've got our versus tech test, so everybody else can play. If you pre-order or you're part of Game Pass, you'll get in. Uh, and we'll have our, um, in August at Gamescom, we're doing uh, Horde. And so you'll be able to go deep in Horde and find out what's going on there. And then September, we come back to the story and really talk about campaign and talk about Kate's story. So kind of over the summer, from now until launch, it's just jam-packed full of information. Yeah, so before the game even comes out, you've already got a, got a story progression there. Yeah, exactly, the exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, we've got a little video. Yeah, I so. figured, hey, maybe not everybody was in the, saw the show, so why don't we uh, show you, give you, the intention of this trailer was to give you a feeling of what it feels like to play Escape, and so uh, why don't we run that? They attacked. And we lost everything. Everything except the need for revenge. This might look like a surrender, but it's not. It's an invasion.
good. But you were, you were playing Lonnie all the time with the electro blade because you're you're an aggressive yeah. player. We just would say. a touch, just a touch. <laughs> so the, I got hype about the, the like the electric knife because it's one of the ultimates that that's in the game. So it's Lonnie's, and you just run in and you start stabbing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good, and so obviously playing with two other people, uh, there were situations where I'd say, hey, I'm going in, just cover me or pick me up when I die, but <laughs> I gotta just go in and do this. And so, uh, Lonnie, can you give us a little bit of information about her? Yeah, so we basically created, we wanted uh, Escape to have its own identity. We didn't want it to be, like it's three characters, and we could have said, okay, let's do a screenshot with JD, Kate, and Dell, and it would look like, oh, it might be they're going into a hive in the campaign, or like you wouldn't understand what it was about. So we wanted it to have its own identity. Mm -hmm. And so having three different characters, Lonnie, Kate, and Mac would sort of would stand out in screenshots, and then we said, "Well, this is actually an opportunity to world build. Let's we have create fully new characters with full like, full backstories." And so we're working with Curtis Weeby to work on this, you know, this great high buster comic book series. There's, at first, issue's already out, paints the backstory for the characters, and uh, you can actually get really invested in them. And so, yeah, Lonnie is our uh, our battle hardened. Um, she's sort of new to the war, like uh, part of the cleanup squads after Gears Three. And so some stuff goes wrong, she ends up in prison. And that's kind of what these guys are. They're a suicide squad, but they're not, there's no bomb in their neck. They're, they have their own reasons for doing it. You know, Lonnie is sort of the, she's the adrenaline junkie. She does it kind of, the, she gets her kicks, but she's also trying to get back to her squad. Uh, Mac is an outsider, so he was never part of the military. Uh, and he's doing it for vengeance. His, his whole village got wiped out by the swarm and he's got nothing left. So this is just a pure vengeance play for him. But he's the tank, so he has a barrier shield and he can protect people while, you know, you're having to get somebody back, getting you back up yes. after you had your stabbing friend. Always revive me. <laughs> uh, and then Keegan, who is sort of the, the, the old guard, he's the a former Onyx guard, uh, and he's looking for redemption. He basically served on Azura, which is the secret island in Gears 3. He never got to really see the war, and he saw his brethren die in the war, and, and he was like protecting VIPs, sort of a glorified bodyguard, and, and he really feels like, you know, that he never had his chance. And yeah. so now he's trying to redeem himself by going back and destroying the swarm and kind of helping to sort of be the fatherly advice on, for the squad. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he's a and he's a support class, so he has a res resupply station. So his ammo is so you know sparse. So important. So important. <laughs> there's, there's hardly any ammo because when you get taken by the snatcher to go in, you uh, you only have your pistol and your knife, and so you have to everything you have to get in the level you get by scavenging. So every every kill is now a new weapon. Every kill is some ammo, and having Keegan drop a supply station resupply station is huge. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we're really excited about having that sort of balance between the three classes and how you play together. But as you saw, that's the communication between the three players, but it's also the overlap of how you use the ultimate abilities. And then, you know, there's eight different difficulty levels. So the harder you play on, you know, you're trying to get to a point where you master it uh, on the eighth difficulty level. And then once you master it, you want to go fast because that's, that's really a speed run mode that you'll put a speed up on uh, a leaderboard and you compare yourself against everybody else. And then uh, every once in a while, the top of the leaderboard will get a reward for that with some sort of cosmetic. So I kind of simplified down to get good and then get fast. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's the tagline. Uh, one of the things that I think is really cool about it is the fact that it's so replayable. Because like a lot of times I feel like there's modes in games where, oh, we have, this, we have this new thing, but then once you play it once or twice and you're kind of beat it, oh, then I'm done with it. But this, you can play it constantly and so much and there's so much to get into. And the whole video, picking up guns and seeing all the different things, like, like you said, the teamwork between the players, right. the fact that uh, they can jump in, they're like ground and pounding you and somebody has to come and save you. Like it does this, uh, such a good job of showing what you actually have to do when the game uh, is going Thanks, yeah, and, we, and the way that the hives are built are with a tile system, and so we're able to build hives really quickly. Um, so we're gonna be putting them out in a regular cadence, and so in every hive can, will be different, and we'll have different difficulty you know, modifiers. Uh, and what's great is we're actually shipping with a, a map builder, so the community and the players can build maps too, build their own hives. So like once you shoot, show uh, that you can beat the hive, then you can put it out there and challenge others to try to beat your hive. So when you guys get this game, <laughs> make all the hardest hives and we'll try exactly. to see what we can do with them. Um, exactly. So okay, so we got the hive busters. Is there anything else that we should know about? So as you saw at the end of uh, the announce on E3 is we're really, really, really excited to have this partnership. Um, so if you pre-order or if you play the first week in Game Pass, uh, you will receive the Terminator Dark Fate character pack, uh, which will get you the, uh, the Gears of War T-800 and Sarah Connor. Uh, which is super exciting for us. We love that franchise. So, uh, and it's just, it's an amazing opportunity just to work with great partners. Yeah. So obviously, uh, does anybody in here like Terminator? <laughs> Good thing. Yeah, you give it up. And so uh, I always love good, good mashups. So having Terminator in the uh, Gears universe is something that's huge for me. I love it. So uh, without further ado, let's watch a little video.
So at this time, we'd like to bring to the stage Jesse Sisgold. He is the president and COO of Skydance. Okay, so obviously, like we said, we love Gears, we love Terminator. What got you guys talking? How did this come about? Um, well, should we start with the fact that I beat you in arm wrestling backstage? Should we, should we leave that? Should we leave that? Out what? Of that I thought we were going to talk about this. <laughs> what? Uh, no, I mean, I, hopefully, like a lot of you, I mean, we grew up just idolizing T1 and T2. Those were core movies that inspired me and, and a lot of the creators, particularly David Ellison, who, uh, who founded our company, um, to fight and put back together the Terminator franchise ultimately bring back James Cameron, who birthed this baby. Um, and if you talk to him, there's only been two Terminator movies, <laughs> period, uh, he's aware of. Uh, and so we're picking right back up um, off of T2. With, and there really can't be a Terminator without Linda Hamilton, also mm -hmm. the, kind of the ultimate iconic badass in there. 100%. And so obviously, big fan of the Terminator series yourself. Yeah. So what, how did you feel when you started started getting to this point of having Terminator in the Gears universe? Well, it just it maps so well. You know, we look at what happened, with it, where Kate is, her journey. You know, she's going from an outsider into a, you know, to a warrior. And it's kind of the same journey that Sarah has, you know, having this sort of like, oh, a civilian into the now this warrior, as you see in the clip. And so we felt like the, that parallel pass. And so I, I was really excited about having Sarah Connor be a character in the game in our universe. So it was going to be something really, uh, awesome to, because of that parallel, just that, that strong female lead character. And what's even more awesome is that Linda's actually going to do the voice of the game, uh, in the game, so yeah. it's going to be super good. You're just, you're giving me so many good things. <laughs> <Right now. laughs> um, okay, so like you said, so we're, we're mashing these things up, and it's such an awesome thing. And it makes so much sense, because the universes uh, have so many strong characters, so to be able to have them both in the same place is just going to feel good to everybody, I feel. Um, Ooh, check this yeah, out. Yeah, so oh one of the things God, you know, that caught me Gears, off guard, sorry. Gears has an iconic art style and so proportions and those sorts of things. And so we've taken the T-800 and kind of gearsified it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and so you see new things like the emissive down the center of the chest. And that's part of the, uh, you know, friend versus foe when you're dealing with multiplayer. You want to have a little bit of red on the bad guys and a little bit of blue on the good guys mm. kind of thing. Uh, I guess that's depending on your perspective. <laughs> uh, and so that was something that, that was great working in the partnership yeah. that we had that, that freedom to be able to do some mm. stuff like that to change the portions a little, proportions a little bit uh, and to be able to add some lights and things like that to be able to identify them in, in when you're playing multiplayer. And, and, and those, those characters like uh, Sarah and, and as well will carry over into other modes as mm -hmm. well. So it's, it's going to be really exciting to be able to play it. And again, to hear Linda's voice in your head is going to be yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's going to be so good. I think, you know, we're technically, we're known as a Hollywood company because we make movies and television, but we, uh, you know, have a pretty hardcore interactive DNA. I mean, David, our founder, is very hardcore. He was, he was as a kid, you know, wired up on Halo and then eventually jumped over the Emergence Day. And um, we are very, very careful about selecting our partnerships. So, you know, we don't have like that ancillary interactive licensing team. That's not how we approach it at all. We, we talk about, um, you know, building a new universe and honoring the fans. And it, it just so happens, you know, our director, Tim Miller, who directed Deadpool, started out in cutting game trailers. I'm sure you guys know, even right. Halo 4. Um, so, you know, the, the collaboration is, is uh, it's been amazing, both in creating a very unique T-800, um, but also making sure that we're doing something that really honors the fans of the franchise, both in the, on the interactive side, uh, television feature, you know, we look at them all as one that are just believers in the story and the characters and uh, couldn't have found a better partnership. I mean, that we have, we have two incredible badass female heroes. They're on a very similar mission in terms of, um, you know, they're sort of outsiders that were brought in to try to conquer fate uh, and save humanity, small yeah. task. But, but, um, <laughs> but no, no, honestly, I mean, you're not gonna see a Terminator or Angry Bird or something. I mean, this is, we're, <laughs> we're, 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 we're really uh, very careful and very focused about honoring fans and making sure that there's integrity back with this franchise. Yeah. Well, I think that's, that's really good to hear because I feel like a lot of times nowadays, things just get mashed up just to mash them up. So to see two things that we feel, I definitely feel should be together because they work so well together is awesome. So it's amazing to hear that 
Do you yeah. feel that way? Yeah, it's also sort of the, how we deal with gears as well. Like we always want to do things that are authentic mm -hmm. and high quality. You know, the things even with our licensing, when we look at when I first came back to the coalition in 2014, we were talking about starting up the licensing group again, and it was like, okay, what do we do? And I was like, I don't want any plastic wallets, I don't want any flip flops, <laughs> I don't want any knickknacks. Like, <laughs> if it's going to be cool, it has to be cool. Like, it has to, you know, do the right version of it, do the high end version of it. And the same is true for relationships and partnerships. You know, I feel like this fits because like we are such fans of this franchise. And I feel like it feels like the world fits together, especially when you see what the how they've been gearsified. Mm -hmm. Like I, they, it just fits, and it feels really, really good. And um, so I'm really excited about it because I feel like it's an authentic partnership. It's not just a tack on. Yeah. yeah. And I think definitely everybody else is just as excited as you guys are because as soon as uh, the, you guys showed the, the clip and the video, everybody's just losing their minds. I'm seeing guys like hugging in the crowd. Like, oh my God! <laughs> so uh, definitely, you guys hit the nail on the head with this yeah, one. For sure. I, th I think it's a nod also to the coalition and, and Xbox. That's that's Sarah. I call her Sarah. But but that um, you know that Linda is excited to do the voice. I mean that speaks to you know, sort of the validation of, of the character in the game too. So we're excited about that. Yeah, me too. We can't wait to get in the booth. It's gonna be awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. I you're know you're a busy man. All good. You got places to be. Yeah, so good. give it up one more time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Now I feel like it's time to meet a new character. Yes. So last year at E3, some people got a glimpse of uh, our new character, uh, Faz Chitani. Uh, he said one line, and a lot of people immediately guessed who he was by saying his one line. <laughs> Uh, but I felt like this is a good coming out time. I think that now is the time to, to let him come out into the light and actually be able to tweet stuff and yeah. Instagram <laughs> stuff because it's been killing him. So, uh, okay. Well, let me please introduce, give a warm welcome to Rahul Kohli. Finally. Two years. <laughs> Two years. I've had to stay away from your social media account. I can't like things. Uh, I've been waiting for this. This is incredible. Thank well, you. you know, now that iZombie's finishing, I figured like, you needed a gig. I do need something. <laughs> so you I needed a gig. Do. I figured I'd throw you a bone. You know, I appreciate it. Mum's <laughs> mum's really happy I'm back in employment. So I appreciate it. How hard is it to keep something like this under wraps for two uh, years? I mean, the fear of you don't want to be the one that messes up, right? That keeps you through it. So like, I mean, yesterday I was queuing up to play Escape. Right. And I heard people in the, in the uh, line talking about the campaign. And I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. But yeah, um, it's, yeah, I enjoyed it. It's fun to be like one of the only people that know the foursome. And it's, it's kind of cool. And this was his first game. Really? It was, yeah, my first game. Yeah, I, um, I hadn't done any voiceover before, yeah. and it shows. No, <laughs> it, but, um, you can hear it. You can yeah. Hear it yeah. But yeah, I, um, I I met Rod in in Vancouver, and uh, he showed me a picture of Far's uh, of casting, and we went for it in the booth, and that yeah, and then it started yeah two years ago. Oh, that's wild. So, how different is it for you jumping into the world of voice acting? Um, I mean, I it is it's a huge difference. I mean, there's some great positives. Like you really can just sort of swing for the fences and not have to worry so much about what your face looks like and what you, I mean, it's all about how it sounds and, and how it, you know, how it feels. At the same time with gears, like, you know, the scripts like that, yeah. um, you don't get a PDF of it and study it and go, well, this is my character's, like, you go in the room and then Rod's like, all right, here's where we are, this is what's going on, go. <laughs> so you're on fire, you're in the desert, uh, go. Exactly, so like, you don't, I don't know, it's, it's, so when I get to play it, I, I kind of get to feel the whole thing, I guess, uh, in a few months. So that was a, that's the biggest challenge was like, you know, playing the character, being present in the moment without really knowing what's around the corner, what's happening. That was kind of uh, an interesting experience. And we, and we, we always go back, that's the funny, like, it's interesting because it's not a start at the beginning and record everything and it all makes sense. It's like, we'll record some and then we'll come back like a month later and then record like interspersed and we'll come back and months later and record interspersed again. So trying to keep like the context straight and like this is where you were and here's, and it's, it's, it's an interesting challenge, like, as you're coming in oh, yeah. cold, going, like, where... There's, I mean, there's literally stuff where, like, I've talked about a scene with Eugene the other day, hey, and he's like, what? I don't, I don't remember saying that. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's, we have the scene. Like, I have the scene of you saying it. But it was like, oh, that was two years ago. I don't yeah, remember saying like, that. I got the receipts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's funny. But, yeah, it was just so cool because we... Um, 
you know, iZombie shoots up in Vancouver, mm -hmm. and so it was just a, it was a great opportunity. Friends of friends, and, and being able to meet uh, Rahul, and then we were just basically um, booked a local soundstage just to do an audition, just because he was in Vancouver. You said you didn't know that it was an audition. I didn't. <laughs> I, someone said, do you want to meet Rod? And I was like, yeah. And then I got in, and it was a waiting room. I was like, this looks familiar. <laughs> and then there were sides, like there was the script there, and I was like, Oh, am I supposed to be preparing for something? And I was like, oh, okay, here we go, I'm auditioning. I had no idea, but um, yeah. And that's one of the things that's great, like with a lot of times on camera actors maybe are not used, with not used to doing voice, they, yeah. they want that preparation or they don't give you choices. Like when you, people maybe don't know, when you do voiceover, generally there's a line like, hey, we're going over there. And then when you say, hey, I'm going over there, we want an A, B, and C, which is three different versions. Mm -hmm. And so that we can kind of range find and pick what we like. And that was one of the great things is just instinctually, like very first line when he did A, B, and C, he did three very completely different versions. And so you were able to go like, oh, I really like where you're going with B. Like, could you give me three more of that? Or how do we, or that's it, you know, that kind of stuff. And he already knew not to do the same thing three times. Sometimes yeah. they just do blah, blah, blah. And you're like, okay, there's no choice there. <laughs> you know, and the fact that he was really easy to direct, the fact that he always had great choices and, that, and he was able to read it and instantly go into it. He didn't have to prepare, you know, and become method on it. So, although, you know, he is a dick in person. So Absolutely. You know, <laughs> I'm super so it was easy that. to play a dick character. 100%. So It's actually funny that, I, after working on Gears, it changed how I approach work at like iZombie and stuff because oh, really? I started giving way more alts. So each take, because I got used to doing ABCs and constantly <laughs> learning ways to put a comma here or bring this up, like I started doing that in the and show. Your director hated it. And that's it. why we're cancelled. That's why it's done. <laughs> I ruined it. I sunk the ship. So. <laughs> but it's got to be fun because, as opposed to acting, so on iZombie, so you yep. see the set, you're in the wardrobe. In this, like you're imagining everything in your head, what Absolutely. you look like, where you're going to be. So how does that change how you approach, as opposed to being on camera? Honestly, it feels like it's almost like improv. Yeah. Like you, the the character becomes like a wardrobe. That's the only thing you do have, right? You get into character, and and you immediately have to kind of know how do they sound, how what's their energy like, and Rod literally will paint a scenario, and in that moment, you go. Y you know, like, so it, it's kind of freeing in the sense of, like, there's no second guessing. You don't sit, I, I won't just, like, sit with that script for three hours, you know, just on one little thing, like, could I do this? Could I, like, you just, you just go from instinct, and that's quite, like, freeing. You just, you don't second guess yourself. You just have to do it, and it's done. And then they'll play it at E3, and, and you go, oh. <laughs> Okay, that's the choice. That happened. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that happens all the time is because we're choosing. Like, so he's giving so many choices, but he doesn't know what choice actually yeah. makes it. So it's always funny when the actors, whenever we play a scene, they'll go like, "Oh, oh, that's the, that's the one you chose." <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's the one we liked. He's like, "Oh, I, I, okay, cool." Well, cool. <laughs> maybe we'll get that reaction now because we're gonna throw the video. Yeah. Oh wow. We should, we should make sure the lights come down. Though I want to make sure. So, uh, what? Uh, it's not campaign gameplay, but I did want to give you is one of the campaign uh, cinematics that we have. So we have an actual cinematic in the game where uh, the squad, JD, Kate, and Dell, run across Spaz for the first time. And so this is Spaz's introduction in the game. So this is the first time you'll see him actually in the campaign when you play the game. Come on! <sighs> Hey, Foz, how's life in Jin's rear echelon treating you? Brilliant. But then we can't all be off on some secret mission. Oh, yeah? How'd you hear about that? This is an army, not a monastery. Yeah, okay. Well, look, we'll just leave you to the very important work, punching machines. And sparring. Hang on a second, shit stick. Shit stick? Del, theories? I don't know. Maybe a stick made out of shit? Or, or a stick used to stir up shit. All right, fuck off. How about we make this interesting? You and me, spar right now. And how exactly is beating you interesting? Yes or no? <laughs> you want in on this? Pretty sure what's actually being measured here is gonna leave me at a distinct disadvantage. Then again, maybe not. Hilarious. Are you in or not? Oh, I'm in. Come on, man. Let's just grab a jack module and get out of here. No, this will be fun. How's that fun working out for you? Try it again, Foz. Come on. 
Hey, here's the thing, Foss. A bottle will spar with you, but not beat you. It's against their programming, but explain. Shit, it's false confidence. Quite a bit, actually. Want some advice, Phoenix? No, I'm good. Jin does love her golden voice. But never for very long. See, that was fun. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you, you went with that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, like, we like to fuck off at the end. Yeah. I immediately love and hate him at the same time. That's, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a dick. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. yeah. Awesome that's you. Typecasting, That's you. Typecasting. Yeah. Yeah. We still, I, don't, I don't like to stretch the actors very far, so I'm like, if I could, who's the, the dick? I could, oh, yeah, Rob, well, yeah. perfect. Just phone perfect. rings. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel being able to play that character and be in this role? How does it feel being yourself? Uh, <laughs> it's... it's it's going to take some getting used to. Like, every time I've heard my voice, it's 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 come from my mouth. Does that make sense? So it's the I first time so. I'm seeing. You know what? It's really weird. It's coming from other places. But like, I, it's 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 that disjoint of seeing it come from someone who doesn't resemble me or like another oh, character. Yeah. That's messing with me right now. It's yeah. something I'll have to get used to. But. Um, Oh, I'm losing it. That was awesome, man. Yeah. That was, yeah. <laughs> ah! Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, they haven't, they haven't, the cast hasn't seen all the cinematics yet, so it's just one of those things where it's like, that's probably his first time seeing yeah. it in a long time. So, so yeah. there'll, there'll be situations where, like, you're playing the game and the cast hasn't seen the full... Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And, and, or what they've seen is, like, gray box, or they haven't seen stuff with their animations and that kind of stuff. Like, Foz was really, like, Foz was inspired, you know, one of the things I really believe in is that in order to get diverse characters, you have to strive for diversity. Like diversity mm -hmm. just doesn't happen, yeah. especially you know from the creative mind of a middle-aged white guy. Like that just doesn't happen, <laughs> right? So you have to find, uh, you have to focus on it. And one of the things is we looked across you know the Gears of War universe was that we didn't really have this sort of South Asian you know sort of uh, ethnicity in the in the cast. And so we actually went and and Foz was really you know created from that. We were like, okay, we purposely want to create a character that has this ethnicity. And then it was like, okay, what's the right voice for this character? And that's when, when and landed in, in the, again, the friend of friends of Rahul. It just was, it was perfect. And then when he came in and we showed him what it looked, what Foz looked like, and he began uh, to perf make do his, the voice that he's doing. And it's amazing. It was a perfect fit. And I just love it so much. And so it was great. I mean, that's, that's one of the things I really love is having this sort of diverse cast and having these really unique voices. And the thing is that they're just all so talented and they all get along. Um, and and they're also all crazy, so you're about to see that very shortly. Um, but it's there's an energy to the cast that is, like, they're the best cast in video game as far as I'm concerned. I'm, I know I'm heavily biased, but um, they're they're just amazing, and Rahul is just an amazing addition. Like it's just he he rounds the, the cast so perfectly. Well, that's one thing that I think is really interesting about Gears is obviously the gameplay is great, but the script, the story, but obviously the cast is so important. You guys do such a good job. So what do you guys say we bring out the rest of the cast? Yeah. yeah. All right. Come on, guys. OK, we've got Eugene Bird as Dell. We've got Liam McIntyre, who plays JD Phoenix. We've got Laura Bailey, who's Kate Diaz. Yeah. And we have John DiMaggio, Marcus Phoenix. Yeah. He's, a, he's a little unknown actor we picked up. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm digging this hat, though. This hat, it's a custom hat, nice hat. Got it for my 50th birthday party for my agents because I make them nice money. <laughs> I make them a little money, so they gave me a hat. <laughs> That's uh, nice. One thing I want to touch on, so backstage, just seeing them all interact, like you can tell, you, get, you guys are a family. It's not like you're just coming in, doing a job, doing the voice and rolling out. Like, you guys are friends. There's love here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Acting's a full-time job. We do it backstage. Uh, we can fake it in the booth, we can fake it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't see us all the time, so this is, this is fun. <laughs> you guys are the best then, man. Uh, how's it feel directing? This amazing cast. Chaotic. It's super chaotic. <laughs> Is it like herding cats? Yeah, yeah. And Gears 4, we did a lot like more cats. ensemble you know, sessions yeah. where they would all be in the room together and we're like, okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's separate. But we love that. You did. Yeah, I know do. you love that. That's when it's, that's when it's <laughs> most fun. Yeah, well, Magic actually, happens. Gears 5 was the first time we actually did PCAP, and so we were doing performance capture, and so mm -hmm. we actually got to do scenes that four of them were able, like the scene you saw back at E3 in 2018 was actually a performance capture scene where they actually got to get into suits, uh, little balls on them, and... Uh, that actually, was fun. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I, <laughs> suits with balls. Suits with balls. <laughs> and they're super tight, so you're like, oh, yeah, that's tight. tight. I must and eat somebody that, took I must the two XLs pie. from me, and I had to wear an XL. Boy, that was rough. That day. <laughs> I was I mad know. as hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, that was not a happy, snap. not a happy market. No, no. Not Joke, Joke and John became this John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, too tight. <laughs> Too much. Uh, so speaking of which, before we get into deeper, so mm -hmm. I was thinking like, why don't we uh, recreate the oh last year's cinematic? Oh yes. um, oh no. but, what happened? But instead of doing it the way <laughs> that we would normally do it, where you each do your own, do, I think we have scripts somewhere. Oh, Ooh, bring the scripts. Let's just improv. There we go. <laughs> That's it. Yes. James Yen, everybody. Uh, yeah. yeah. James Yen. Yeah. He's the mastermind behind all of this, okay. making sure the panel went well. So thank uh, you. Very you much. take this one. You take this one. I know it. Uh, so oh, shit. can I do Marcus like this? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how. That's how. It's, it's time to drop the hammer. That's if you want to follow along. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> Tom, Ben, you two take left. Cole, you come with me. <laughs> Uh, that's what it's like all the yes, time. Exactly. If we could just get that oh, version no. as well in the game. No, you, know what's, you know what's funny though is that there's mo there there are moments in the in the in the studio when we goof around a little. You know, things just start to moments. Yeah, moments, moments happen. <laughs> well, moments happen. Like you know, like that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four. You know what happens after that? And then you know, and then there's you know my tomatoes. Yeah. The whole tomato rant. Yeah, tomato there's no rant. Home Depot in here. No, there's no <laughs> no Home Depot out here. <laughs> can't go get, I can't just go get tomato seeds. <laughs> My tomatoes. <laughs> it's dumb sauce. Um, it's okay. Usable lines every session. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Always usable. Okay, so what I figured we'd do is recreate it, but it, we're going to mix it up, uh, oh like we, some, somewhat Ooh. similar to we did at Comic Con the other time. So. Rahul, as our newest cast member, I figured would give the majority of the lines to as yep. Kate Diaz. Woo! Yeah! Oh, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm just be over here judging you. Oh, God. It as we all will. Exact. Uh, and changes. I thought it'd be interesting to have Eugene be Marcus. Yeah. Like, since he tries <laughs> so it. Excited. All the so time. are we doing impressions of, the, of everybody? You should be trying to do what you can. Oh. Yeah, you should be doing your voice. Yeah, that's why. Why do you think I'm saying <laughs> that? I, I can't even do an American. God oh, damn, tomato. Bad. <laughs> uh, maybe so much uh, so uh, JD will be played by Laura Bailey, so it'll be JD. Hello. Uh, G'day. What I consider to be the most dangerous casting call is John playing Dell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to do it with you. I, know. I, got, you I, know I, I got your number. <laughs> and Lee will play Foz in this particular what? scene. Sure thing, mate. So. Uh, so if you haven't seen the scene, so basically what's happened is uh, Kate rushes in. There's been a, someone has died that's very close to her. She's reacting to it, and we place the scene where she actually rebels against uh, JD and the cog because she's going to go on a personal train. This is such a serious scene. Yeah, this, right? is, this is a bummer. If you're man. better than her, I know. Then well, <laughs> throw there's no in danger of that. That's what makes it good. Yeah, exactly. So I will, there's very little narration, but what it, little there is, I'll try to do to read you in to the scene. Sure. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so you remember, so Kate is just mm -hmm. rolled out of a snatcher as this begins, and she's running to find out what happened to the person. Okay. Okay. Not good. Uh, uh, Painting the picture. <laughs> okay, so external outsider village. <laughs> we see Kate run into the front of an outsider village. She sees a grim and grief-stricken Dell, along with an outsider standing over a body. She runs faster. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> um, and That's what we, I sound like. It's okay. Uh, Del. Kate. No, 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 no. Kate, Kate. You can't see this. You don't want to see this. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> then, from behind Kate... <laughs> we see the stem sleeve of a mysterious cog soldier reaching out to touch her shoulder. On contact, Kate turns and looks to see it's JD. He's changed in many ways, many head ways. shaved. <laughs> 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 Testicles retracted. 
We're going a different direction. <laughs> yeah. I do that all the time. What's the matter with that? It was cold. You're, you're 50. You have to do that to go to the bathroom. I, I know. It's true. <laughs> Years after dark. Nobody likes wet balls. <laughs> Yeah, everybody yeah, up there, yeah. you know what I'm talking the, about. The world, run, the world runs on Duncan. That's yeah, all yeah that's right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> wow. So on contact, Kate turns and looks. It's JD. He's changed in many ways. Head shaved, face scarred. Kate, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's too soft. I'll no take it. Can hear I'll you. take it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just do Dell as Barry White. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, JD. For coming here. Wow. Of course. Can I uh, recommend we maybe get these people out of here? <laughs> hey, just, just slow down. <laughs> no, no, Foz is right. We need to move. <laughs> what do you? What if I just like play with like a stuffed up nose the whole time? <laughs> That's how yeah, I live. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? What are you? He's a, He's dead, man. Give her a minute. <laughs> She'll get her minute in the Raven. Del, oh wait, that's you. What the hell is wrong with you? Del, we need to leave. I'm not going to. <laughs> Excuse me? For months now, I've been having these dreams, nightmares, but I think they were messages. That's the only one I could hear, I'm so sorry. That's <laughs> good, that works. Okay. This, that works. Kate holds up her necklace, outside her emblem out, then she turns it around to show them the locust symbol. What? <laughs> so, if anybody knows, Laura did anime, or does anime, and that <laughs> is so anime, it's not even funny, it's so, I love it every time. In anime, you can't go, huh? You have to go, oh, nin. <laughs> Whenever she does that. <laughs> Okay. Oh. Yep. Something's something's happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Marcus. Oh. Your grandmother's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Enough. He's not gonna be able to speak for a week after that. <laughs> we'll deal with this later. Foz rounds people up. <laughs> All right. I need help. There's a place up north. I think we can find you answers there. <laughs> God, Jesus Christ. No. How do you do that? Anyway, go ahead. No, absolutely not. What, what the hell happened to you? <laughs> somebody somebody give JD a Benadryl. We My have, God. <laughs> we have orders. <laughs> You'll go with me? God damn it, both of you listen to me. I'll go with her. <laughs> Look, if you're missing, gentle notice. Okay, I'll push Jack the coordinates. No, no, Corporal. You're coming back to New Fear, that's a direct order. Well, Captain, screw your order. <laughs> this is about you, it's about me. I need to fix this. Kate then walks away. JD lets Marcus and Foz get ahead of Dell and him. Then he takes Dell aside. Hey, watch her. Her necklace, that's a locust symbol. Do you need a Kleenex or some shit? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, the locust symbol, yeah, so? She'd never be our enemy by choice. I know that. <laughs> It's like the rug rats don't <laughs> <laughs> That's how I sounded when I was 14. Oh, oh God. no. Guys. Yeah, because she would die for us. I know that. But what if it's not her choice? <laughs> and see. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I just noticed Regina. you only gave Faz one line. <laughs> That's not fair on you or me by a station. <laughs> e Eugene, I'm sorry you had to do that. I have an ear, eye, nose, and throat guy. You can see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally cool. Oh, God, I tried my best. 
No, I'm stuck like this see, now. I want to see JD playing D&D uh, &D now. Oh. Hey, guys. Ah, uh, so I really it needs to happen. <laughs> Change in so many ways. Do so you have so, individual questions? For yeah, you? so <laughs> what, I, what I love about this is the fact that, like, now that I've heard this, I want a mode in the game where I can just toggle these voices. <laughs> <laughs> just do all the cutscenes like that. Like, you guys have time, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 that's totally easy. Perfect. Let's do another year of VO. Let's put that out. Yeah. Yeah. I like money. We got, we got I like money. money. <laughs> I'm available. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm ready. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, uh, so Eugene. Yes. Uh, you are the voice of the player. So hmm? how does your voice of the player? Yeah, yeah. Del, Del represents. Del. I mean, it's the same as we did with Dom. It's like with you represent what the player's thinking when you're when you, yes. when, and so yeah. you're the you're the voice of the player. Essentially, it's always I'm nice the heart to have of the that. game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, like everything re do, does revolve around that kind of person because it's me while I'm playing the game. Like, what do I want to do? The emotions that I'm feeling, right. I can feel them through Del. Right. So how does it feel being able to be that voice for the people playing the game? Scary. Uh, <laughs> scary for a lot of reasons because the fact is, it's like. I was a Gears fan before all this, and then having to do this, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to do that, because you know, it's, it, you put your heart and your soul into this, you want the players to want to empathize with the characters, and to, in five, we have to do that, especially with my journey with Kate, to bring something deeper to the forefront. So hopefully, the fans will feel what they'll feel through me, through the game. <laughs> I don't know how to say anything else beyond that. <laughs> I'm watching you very, very closely. No, no, no. Yeah. Rob was like this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> Not the mics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so uh, Liam, you uh, playing JD, Marcus's son. So there's a transformation that he goes through throughout the game, obviously, the evolution of him. Can you talk about that a little bit and how Absolutely it looks like not. a voice? Uh, <laughs> in no way. After that veiled threat from Rod. Um, no, it's, um, I really like this, this story that we're telling in Gears 5. It's, um, it's breaking the mold of Gears probably uh, in a way that I don't think Gears has had the chance to do yet. Uh, I think that's exciting from both, like, the way the game plays, but also the way that we're telling the stories now. I think that's with because you know I don't want to be like. So this is what happens at the end. Um, but um, it's uh, JD's journey is really different in this one. It's it's um, it's surprised me when I was reading it and going through it, and uh, in a really cool way. It's it's really interesting and it's complex and it's challenging. Um, and yeah, and he, and he goes in a different direction than I guess I expected, which I think is gonna be really fun to play and experience. And yeah, I, I, I just think that the story in Gears 5 is gonna bring players something that they haven't found before, which I'm excited to see. Nice, and so uh, <laughs> you're playing old man Marcus. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> How, how's it, seeing obviously his progression through the Gears series and now he's older. Well, what's interesting is that, I mean, I've aged with the character myself and I think we've aged appropriately together. So to play him at this age isn't really that much of a stretch because it's just, it's just me doing the character yet older. I mean, and it's, it's, kind, of, it's, kind, of, it's kind of easier, uh, uh, if you will. Um, but it's just been, it's just been a trip. I mean, you know, from from the I mean, the whole entire road we've taken in this franchise has just been absolutely amazing. Um, uh, uh, to to still be in the game. I mean, the amount of death that's happened, <laughs> and to still be around, like, it's just <laughs> that's yeah. I was saying in the back, I was just like. You know, if there are any more games, I don't know. I just want to die a natural death. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to catch a chainsaw. I just want to, you know, you know. I just want to. I just want to die. Just like. Be very much. <laughs> oh my God! Dude. <laughs> oh, oh, Anya, I. You know, and it's that, you know, call it a day. You know, that'd be great. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. Who knows? I don't can know. I, can, I, but, can I share what you said to me? What one of the booths about? Like, John, John came up to me and he's like, "Dude, like, you gotta let me know. Like, if you're gonna kill me, like." I got a note. I got a house to pay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got a house payment. You got to let me know if you're going to kill me. I got me. a mortgage in spot of place. I got enough. Just, if you don't mind, just let me grow old with years. Yeah. <laughs> it's been 14 years, dude. Like, yeah, I know. It's been wow. a long time. 14 years, which is really cool. But, you know, you can't have a kid in 14 years. I mean, you can, but not JD's age. <laughs> okay. I like, so I was playing a little older. No, I was playing young. I was playing younger. And now I'm playing old. Ooh. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's some acting cred right there. <laughs> <laughs> Stretching it. Ooh, just yeah. evolving. <laughs> no, it's been it's been a blast. And though. And it, JD is actually 14. Yeah, it's nobody's that's, yeah, known nobody it the knows. whole time. War changes you. They grow big. Yeah, you have to mature <laughs> and grow quickly. But you, I mean, you mentioned before family. This is a great group of people to be working with, and 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 to come back to something, you know, uh, to come back to something and be able to do it all, do it again with a new. With, with new blood and new life into the story. It's just, it's just been a really incredible ride. And I, I got a hat out of it. So um, <laughs> it's pretty cool. And the, one of the things that, this hat. Uh, probably the biggest piece of feedback we got from this, the trailer we showed, or the cinematic we showed last T3, was where the hell is Marcus's beard? And you can't have a little name Marcus without his beard. So everybody will be happy to know Marcus has his beard back. So the Ooh. game ships with Marcus's having his full beard back again. So he's truly old man Marcus once again. So, no a, lot of death, a lot of death, but life as well. Life, life in the beard. Life in the beard, yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, Laura, you're playing Kate. So obviously, uh, there's some intricacies about the story that involve her and just revolve around her. What was it like for you getting to uh, bring her to life? <laughs> it's been amazing. Uh, I've, I've been so impressed with the story progression and the writing of all of the characters, but especially me, because I, I read those that's, ones that's Tom mostly. That's um, <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think in this, in this game, we haven't shied away from really uh, hard character progressions and choices. And, you know, it's, it's a struggle. And it's, it, I never expected going into this that the emotions that we would be going through would be so so strong, and even doing the performance captures, those those cutscenes that we shot together were just yeah. wonderful. And yeah. to get to like fully embody Kate, right. it was wonderful. Awesome, it's awesome. Well, it's great to hear from from you guys. And I want to know what you guys have to ask because I'm sure there's people in here that love Gears and came here to ask some questions. So we want to open up to a few people. Is there a mic in the audience, I think? Where is it? <coughs> What's the story? Where I just run mine? down there. And I, kn I, knew, I knew it. I told them in the back that you might try to run down. I'll run down there. <laughs> are you going to pull, 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 pull a Phil Donahue? Oh, totally wait, where's the mic? Where's the mic? Where's the mic? Oh, the mic is right there. Oh, the mic is right there. Oh, I'm sorry. Sit back. So if you have a question, just step to the mic. We got a question here? Yes. No, he's got the mic. Oh, he's got the mic. Go to the person sitting down. Sit back. There we go. Any question? Any question here? Here we go. Hi, yeah, I was wondering if uh, Kate has a sexual preference in the new game. Ooh. Is that your business, <laughs> motherfucker? <Yeah. laughs> Maybe she's a switch hitter. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Does that answer your question? What kind of nerd boy fucking, what is she doing? <laughs> Bro, complete that. I'm fucking bringing it. I don't care. You, you want to ask that. a question like that, you're gonna get an answer <laughs> like that. Oh <laughs> my Microsoft god! Can handle it. What's important is that we know oh she's here to shoot god. stuff. Yeah. That's what yes, thank you. Next yeah. question, please. <laughs> Moving on. Yes. Oh my god. Broad shoes. Right here. Be careful. <laughs> yeah. No, got you live rounds. He's coming to right no, you guys clearly exhibited that you guys are family up there. Um, wanted to know, though, what was it like on a daily basis on, or, or uh, working from beginning of the day to the end of the day, working on a script and communicating? What, what was that like to kind of get a picture, what that entails a little bit? Extremely collaborative. Yeah, extremely. Well, Rod, collaborative. Rod's really great at that. Like, yeah. what, um, what is ex like? You, you find out very quickly is is Rod completely understands. Like you, you guys know, he completely understands the world that we exist in. <coughs> Every so, facet of it. Yeah, too. like yeah. like we were talking about how you make a great DM. Yeah, um, yeah. We, we were really just uh, we were just joking in the back in, that you would make the, the gears great table dungeon master. All time. <laughs> in the pen <laughs> paper <laughs> gears. Because you just because it, it's just it. so it's just so layered and thick. Everything. Everything is there from the character Bible to, 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 to the storylines. It's just all, it's all there. Right. Um, and, to, and to be able to be in the, in the room and, and be there when, when, it, when it happens, when the creativity is, is going on, to be able to, you know, when we were all in the room together doing stuff, it's just, it's, it's incredible, you know? I mean, 
Um, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been great, and it's always been great. That's the thing, it's been consistently great, even when these guys weren't around. And I was, it's been, it's, it's always been that way. It's mm -hmm. super, like one of the things we always love about is the, uh, the actors bring the characters to life. So it's, there's things on the page, but there's also things in their head that we want to bring to life. And so we always say, feel free to push, feel free to take it someplace else, feel free to explore where it could be. Because again, we're kind of doing it instinctually. It's kind of like in the moment. One, so. my, one of my favorite moments happened <laughs> when we were doing that, and you were like, that's it. Uh, uh, somebody, somebody was saying something about plants, and I was like, what am I, a fucking botanist? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, that's definitely Marcus, that's definitely Stan. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's just things, things like that happen in a recording session when, you know, when we all come together and, and you know, that's, 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 that's a real beautiful thing. We also get stir crazy. So when we, I've had many a moment where after like a week long of just recording session after recording session after, and you start going stir crazy and somebody starts doing that and you go like, this is hilarious and you're laughing and you're crying in the booth and you're like, this is so good, it's so great and then it all gets set in and shipped back to the studio and you get back and everybody's like, okay, what did Rod get this time? And they're like, what the hell is this? And, like, and you're like, oh yeah, that was really funny when I was super tired. <laughs> When I was hallucinating from no sleep, sure. Yeah, but now I, I see, it's not that funny. Years anymore. four, where I had like, you were talking before Raul about A, B, and C's, and I was like, you just meant to do three of them? Yeah. Um, oh, I do like yeah. 70, and they, they, they like, oh. stop for the love of God, stop saying yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. He's, um, he's literally the dude that would give you about 50 of them, and the mic is still on. And I think it was <laughs> like, I think, because we don't always record together, I think oh, yeah. someone left the track open, and I was like, what, uh, what he is just it? kept going, what he just it? kept repeating what a line it? over and over. And who, it just, who, are, who was there? Who was, was, it was, who, just, who was there? Who was there? Just, just, boom. Yeah, it was just boom, 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 boom. And I was just like, oh, JD, you don't have to talk as much. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> but he responded to everything, so it, it would be like, what, what do you mean? I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you in a second. What do you mean? I'll tell you in a second. What do you mean? I'll tell you in a second! <laughs> what do you mean? Oh my God! <laughs> Yeah, it's Liam's the, the first, because Liam, like, he's, he's the first actor I had to, like, create sign language for to be like, just stop, just stop. Because Wait, what happens no. is, it, because so they'll, go, they'll go A, B, C, so you'll hear, like, someone will record A, B, and C, and you're like, okay, great, and then maybe in that moment you can't instantly go B, so you go, hey, can you play that back? And so the engineer will go, like, sure, and he'll, he'll, they'll press play, and it'll be A, B, and C, but while the engineer's getting ready to play, he does it again, so he does another A, B, and C, and you're going, like, wait, was that, did, is that the recording, is that him? <laughs> Did you record what he just said? Because that was really good. Oh, but it's, I don't know, you're just like, stop talking. I don't know where it's coming. Like, it's it like, didn't it occur so to me that you could still, I, fi I figured you just were like, shut up, Liam. And I was just in, in the booth and like, maybe I'll say it like this, maybe like this, maybe like that. And they're like, and I'm like, why are they so confused in there? It must be really hard to choose those things. Um, meanwhile, my wife is in the audience being like, he's like that at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come in, honey, how are you? Honey, how are you? Uh, we might have like, <laughs> one more, we have one time yes. for one more quick question more. before we run out of time. We got you right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, do you think we might get a little bit more background story about, uh, you know, Kate and her maybe succumbing to the, you know, dark side or like the locust and her having those visions and... So there's this great coming, game coming on September 10th. <laughs> it's called Gears, Gears 5. five. It, 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 it's, a, it's a great story about Kate and her journey. <laughs> so let's summarize it now. And um, when you buy yeah. it, that's when you get it. It's what you hope it will be. Yes, it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> I'll just say that it's, it's what you hope it'll be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But as you know, yeah. like with the game, and you it's talked about, really cool. uh, we've got the comics as well, so there's tons of Gears content in the Gears universe. So Yeah, and by the way, something that we're really excited about, so one of those things that, like, being uh, with the success of Gears is you often get to work with your heroes, and along with this cast, uh, is I got to work with Alex Ross. Uh, and so Alex Ross Alex painted Ross? Uh, this Bob painting. Ross? Alex Ross works in, not you. in digital, he actually paints, and we, he painted uh, our, our Bob journey Ross? of Gears 5. Yeah, Bob Ross. Bob Ross? Did a little cloud in the Alex, yeah, where's the gonna, little bush? We're just so. going to put a little blue it's right so Anyway, I think you need yes, to wrap we gotta, up. Gotta, yeah. A little bush right So, okay, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you to everybody here yeah. on the thank panel. You, Give a big round of applause. Yes. Yes. Make sure you're checking out Gears 5. We appreciate you. Have a good day.